Hi, I'm Ben Bristow, lead DJ instructor here at Point Blank Music School, and we're here in Studio 4, our DJ classroom in London, where students can also book practice time throughout their studies. And I'm going to show you how to connect up a basic DJ setup. Depending on what equipment you're using, what hardware you've got, whether you're using a laptop or software or just hardware, there's going to be a lot of different ways you can do that. And depending on the model of CDJ or mixer you might have, there might be extra connections you can make. I'm going to show you with two CDJ2000 Nexus decks and a DJM900 Nexus mixer. I've also got a LAN hub here which allows me to connect the decks and the mixer to that hub so that they can receive signal from each other, which I'll explain a bit later. And I've got two monitor speakers here and also a, a master main output that I would connect to as well. And I'm going to explain how I would connect everything up and why I would do it in that way. The classic way of connecting your CDJs to your mixer is with a stereo RCA phono cable per CDJ into a specific mixer channel. So each CDJ's output would be connected to a line input of a mixer channel. For example, on this setup, I'm going to connect the right deck into channel three of my mixer, the left deck into channel two of my mixer. So I'm using the middle two channels. I'm not going to be using channels one and four. This is a four channel mixer, so you could use all four of those channels and have four separate CDJs plugged in. Or indeed, you could have two turntables, analog turntables, and two CDJs plugged into the mixer. So the difference being with an analog turntable, that would need to be connected to the phono input of the mixer. Now, the reason for that is uh, the signal from an analog turntable is not as loud as a digital device like a CD player. So that signal would need to be boosted, which is what the preamp does in that channel. So if I connect a CDJ to the phono input, that signal would be boosted far too much and it doesn't need to be boosted that much. Whereas we're using digital or CD players, so you would want to connect those into the line or the CD line input. The other option you have got on this mixer is the digital ins. So you've got these four digital inputs here on the back of the mixer and this CDJ has got a digital out where you could use an SP diff cable from each deck into one of these digital ins. Whichever one you use, you've just got to make sure the channel selector on your mixer is set to the correct setting. I've got several options on each channel selector. Digital, CD line, that's where I'm going to connect these CDJs to. So the final option on each channel on this mixer is USB. Now that is if you've got a USB cable connected to your mixer and then the other end is connected to a computer, you can use software such as Serato, Traktor or Rekordbox and often use the mixer as the sound card for that particular digital vinyl system. So we're not going to be doing that today, but that is why you would select the USB. It's receiving signal from that USB cable. So we've got a stereo RCA cable here. So I'm going to connect the left and the right of that cable from the output of my CDJ. The other end needs to go to the CD line of channel three. So I'm going to get the cable for the other deck and do the same. So that's going to go into CD line of channel two. And then the other end is going to go from the stereo out of that left deck. So that's my two decks connected to mixer channels. I've got to make sure that my input selector is set to the relevant input that I've used here. So I've connected to CD line, therefore I'm changing that channel selector to CD line. Each CDJ has got its own power cable, so they're plugged in already, so that's all good. Often people will set their decks up by connecting one deck to the other with a LAN cable, a local area network cable or ethernet cable linking the two decks together. The advantage of that being that you can use one USB and you can read the tracks off one USB on the other deck that doesn't have a USB connected. It's better, especially if you're using a mixer like this, which has got a LAN connection on it, to connect all of the decks and the mixer to a LAN hub, because that means you've got the benefit of quantized effects. So it means you can actually have the mixer detecting record box beat grids from the CDJs themselves, meaning that all the tempo of the effects will be perfectly synchronized with your tracks. Because I've got this deck connected to channel two, for consistency, I'm gonna connect it into the second port of my LAN hub. The other deck, 
Same thing from, from the link connection. That's gonna go into the third port of the LAN hub because this is on channel three. So again, to keep it consistent so that they're the same. Then I'm gonna put the mixer's LAN connection into the fifth input of my LAN hub. If I were using four decks, I would connect the first deck to the port one, second to port two, third to port three, and fourth to port four. So I'm kind of keeping those spare just in case I wanted to connect extra decks up. If you are using a mixer that has more LAN connections, you might not need the LAN hub. So for, a, for example, a DJM2000 mixer has four LAN ports on the back here. That means you wouldn't really need the hub. You could just connect all your decks into your mixer. So now my decks and mixer will be able to hear each other in, in effect. So the mixer will be able to detect any beat grids that I've created in Rekordbox that are on my tracks. So now because of that LAN cable going to the LAN hub from each deck and from the mixer, it means I can read music from this USB key on this other deck. So if I press the link button, that will be able to stream data from that USB key via that LAN cable into this deck. So I can now see all the music that's on that USB on this side and select. I can even play the same track on both decks if I wanted to. So that's a major advantage of having your decks connected via LAN connections. You can link between decks. Now that's available on CDJ 2000s, CDJ 2000 Nexus, CDJ 2000 Nexus 2s, 900s, 900 Nexus, XDJs. It isn't available on CDJ 850s or obviously the really old ones, CDJ 1000s, CDJ 800s. So not all CDJs have the ability to link, but if there's a link button, then they will have that LAN connection on them. Now, another thing that a lot of setups might have in slightly different ways, this can be set up, is the fader start function. So it means that your crossfader can activate your cue point, basically. So on this setup, I can use this fader start function via the LAN connection. So this is another advantage of having that LAN hub in my setup. If you're on another setup, you might have control connections, which are mini jack sized connections on both the CDJs and the mixer. So if you connect the control connection from the mixer into the CDJ, that is the fader start function. That's how it works. On this mixer specifically, it doesn't have those control connections. So you have to do it via the LAN connection. Now, what I'd need to do first for this to work is go to my mixer's utility page. So on the 900 at the top here, there's an on off button. And if you hold this down, you go into the utility page of the mixer. And it, the first option that appears is the fader start option. So if it says off here, what you need to do is press the tap button and then the status kind of flashes and you can use the beat buttons to turn it off or on. So I'm changing this to on and pressing tap again, which means now fader start is on. Now, if I press fader start on for the two channels that I'm using, so fader start for channel two and for channel three, and also I need to make sure that my crossfader has been assigned to those two channels. So crossfader A on my left channel, crossfader B on the right channel. Now, what this means is if I load a track here, this crossfader can send a note on message to the CDJ via that LAN connection and actually trigger the music as though I've pressed the Q button, but from the crossfader. So when I open the fader, you can see the, the tune started. When I shut the fader, it's re queued it. So if I set my cue point a bit more accurately, now every time I open the fader, the, the track starts, but when I shut it, it's gone back to the cue point. So, so it's like your crossfader is doing what your cue button could do, basically. In terms of the outputs of the mixer, you've got several options here. If you are recording a set, you've got a record out. Set the record level on whatever device you're recording with, and it will give you a good signal without it clipping. It's not affected by the master level or the booth monitor level. So if you are setting up in a club situation, you're gonna be using your master output for the main club sound system. You're gonna be using your booth output for your monitor speakers in the DJ booth. Now your master out, you've got XLR out, so you've also got master two, which is a phono or RCA sized master out. So those would be my sort of main speakers in the club that I'm DJing in. So you would 
connect your XLR cables, which would go to the main sound system. And that level is gonna be affected by this master out here. Don't go into the red on your master output. Now my booth output here, that is for the speakers in the DJ booth so that I can reference the sound and mix accurately. So I want speakers near me that I can hear the audio accurately rather than just listening to the master speakers or the main sound system, I need a direct reference. So for those, I'm using two balanced quarter inch jack cables. So I'm gonna go from the booth output of my mixer into my two monitor speakers. Right, and then into the balanced TRS input to my monitor. The booth out left of my mixer is gonna go into the balanced TRS input of my left speaker. Now, in a bedroom situation or a home studio, you may not have two sets of speakers. You're not gonna need that in such a small space. So you might just wanna use your master output and that output is going to your monitor speakers and therefore you've got control over your speakers via that master out. Alternatively, you could use your booth monitor as your kind of main speakers in your home studio or bedroom. Sensibly, I suppose it would be better to use the master because then you can be judging the volume visually on the LEDs for the master output because your booth monitor level does not have its own LED display. Um, alternatively, if you wanted to practice without speakers on, it might be an advantage to use the booth output because then you could keep your booth output down, therefore your speakers would not be playing, but you could still reference the master output in your headphones leaving the master fader up or the master volume up. Therefore, you could still be mixing in headphones and hearing your faders working in the headphones. Another thing that I would generally do if I've bought new decks or I'm playing on decks and I'm not sure whether they've had their firmware updated is actually update the internal firmware on the CDJs themselves. So especially if I'm using the latest version of Rekordbox, for example, I definitely want my CDJs to be on the latest firmware. Otherwise, you can get compatibility issues. Pioneer advise you to always make sure you're on the latest firmware update. So in order to do that, I'm gonna activate the deck whilst holding reloop exit and USB. So as I, I'm holding those two buttons down and turning on the CDJ, so I keep those two held down and on the screen, it should prompt me to insert the update. It's now asking me connect USB storage device into top USB port. So I would have already downloaded that update onto a USB key from the Pioneer website. When I put the USB in, it would read that update and internally update the firmware of that CDJ. Then you just have to turn it off. And when you turn it back on again, it will be on the latest firmware. So now I've got everything connected, I'm going to turn my equipment on and make sure that everything's working. Now the speakers are going to be the last thing I turn on in this equation. So I'm going to firstly turn on the mixer on the back here. The, the volumes are down to start with, just to be on the safe side. You don't want to be kind of creating any loud signal into your mixer by accident. So the decks, I'm going to connect, uh, turn those on. I'm checking that my Channel selectors are set on the correct inputs, so I've used CD line for both channels, so that's what they're um, set to. Now I'm going to put a USB key into this right deck, waiting for the red light to stop flashing, because that means it's reading the USB key. I'm now going to turn on the monitors, so on the back here, check the volume, so it's not too high. So what I want to do now is check that these decks are set to the correct player number so that that correlates with the uh, input that I've used to my LAN hub. So if I press and hold menu and go down, I'm checking that this one is on player number three and the one on the left is player number two because remember earlier I connected this deck into the second input of my LAN hub, this into the third input. Now I'm going to select a track to play audio through the system and make sure that I'm getting sound. So I'm gonna press USB on this right deck to access this USB key. Scroll down, find a track. Now I've got all my channel faders down just to be on the safe side. I don't wanna press play and then suddenly realize that everything's set up too loud and it's gonna cause distortion through my speakers or, or even worse, pop the, the speaker cone. So if I press play on this deck, I'm looking at my mixer and I can see there's signal coming into channel three, which is a good sign. 
So there's definitely sound coming in. Now my gain level, I definitely don't want that going into the red. So I'm always throughout the whole set trying to avoid that channel going red and my master channel. So I'd want to adjust my gain level. Ideally, I'd be staying around the zero point, but on a mixer, you can often get away with it being slightly louder than that, as long as you're not clipping. So there's signal coming in. Oh, I'm also wanting to check whether my master level is doing anything. If I gradually bring up the master level and then raise the channel fader for that channel, I can see that there's a signal coming in here and now I'm getting a stereo signal on my master output. The final thing I need to do here is to actually bring up the booth level here because that is my booth monitor speaker level. So if I bring that up, we're getting audio coming through, which is all good. So it's always good to keep faders down and gain levels low before you start playing music because you could end up you know, damaging your equipment basically. Be on the safe side, bring all your levels down, play some audio, make sure you're seeing audio come through the system and then slowly bring the fader up. The final thing I need to do is obviously use some headphones because I want to be able to preview sound on the mixer in order to prepare music and beat match. So that is an output on my mixer here. So if I connect my headphones to the headphone output, when I play music, I'd also want to be cautious that my headphone level is low so that I'm not going to hurt my ears if I had them on and then I press the button to send sound there. I don't want to sort of quickly send lots of volume into my headphones. So if I bring this level up to a kind of about maybe less than halfway around, if I press one of the Q buttons, we are now getting sound in the headphones, even though we're not getting it through the speakers. So the faders are down, therefore it's not being sent out of the mixer, but the Q button allows it to be routed to the headphones. So thanks for watching. I hope you found this useful and it's helped you set up your DJ equipment more effectively. If you want to find out more about our range of courses, please check out www.pointblankmusicschool.com. And if you don't want to miss the next in this series, please make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel.